Hi, this is Steve. Welcome back to SFO, where we don't use blue pen because we're not in kindergarten anymore. Blue pen is up there with the green highlighter and the mini stapler as far as useless office products. Sorry if you do like those things, but we don't use them around here at SFO. So put them back in your drawer, pull you up your chair, and let's get to talking. Um, I feel like since this is the second episode and a slight modification on the first, you'll notice the green shirt, uh, that we would do well to dive into cover songs. They still make cover songs in 2022, and they make some pretty good ones. Uh, the ones I want to talk about have been performed by Ifanye Ellsworth, Ethel Kane, and Kate Clover, who have been covering the likes of Summer Walker, Britney Spears, and Nancy Sinatra. I would like to start, however, with Emily Wolfe, who covered The Slider by T-Rex. Wolf. T-Rex. Wolf. 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 You're thinking these animals aren't remotely alike. They don't live at the same time. What's the connection? Well, if you've heard... Emily Wolf, and I hadn't until I heard her cover of The Slider, you would not think she's much of a stranger to the music of Mark Bowen and T-Rex. Kind of like I'm not a stranger to accidentally bumping this desk every five minutes. I don't know what my problem is. I'm trying to stop, okay? Just bear with me. Her self-titled debut album was a guitar-heavy record. Sorry, that's an image of a heavy guitar. Um, but it was heavily indebted to the likes of the Black Keys, ZZ Top, and riffs like Spirit in the Sky. You could draw a straight line from the second song on her debut, the song is Holy Roller, to the Boogie Woogie on the two seminal T-Rex albums, Electric Warrior and The Slider. If you don't really know T-Rex that well, or you aren't familiar with these records, maybe you just know Bang and Gone, Get It On. I can't recommend them enough. Um, keep your composure, though. Don't go whole hog on the T-Rex catalog. The early albums, when they were known as Tyrannosaurus Rex, are kind of hippy-dippy stuff that wanders, and I don't know. It's uh, I spent a couple hundred bucks acquiring those in the early 2000s, and then I think in a couple years later, Rhino reissued them all on my ass. So, uh, yeah, save your money. However, Mark Bowen, who essentially was the band, had a sort of style that never let you know if he was really in on the entire joke. Kind of like Glenn Danzig. He would write these sort of campy songs with silly lyrics and guitars and drums that were primed for 70s teenage hormones. Uh, and on the surface, the words often made no sense. He seemed like he was stitching words together more because they sounded okay together or they would complete a rhyme scheme he was trying to finish off as opposed to making any sort of sense. Uh, some of them were pretty incomprehensible. However, with the slider in particular, or even a song like Cosmic Dancer, which has a sense of melancholy in it, melancholy in it that's pretty sweet, actually. That, that song was in Billy Elliot, and um, I think even Nick Cave has covered it. The slider's title track has a big, fat, bluesy groove. There's huge cutting cellos on top of it. It's got soulful backup singers. And Bolin is peppering the song with... Uh, References to drugs that are pretty specific to the 70s and probably is pretty specific to England. Uh, the name The Slider itself comes from the act of sliding along a mirror with a straw in your nose. Also, he uses phrases like, I never nailed a nose before, which sounds like complete nonsense, but it actually has to do with people who used to grow their pinky nail along the, you know, what do they call that, a key bump? I don't know. I, I don't know the lingo. So the melancholy notion in that song is that he can't be creative unless he's high and not smoking a joint high, doing some serious drugs high. Let's re-enter Emily Wolf. 
her second and most recent album called Outlier pulls back from the guitardom of her debut and experiments more with what we will call in music um, electronic textures. That's a picture of electronic textures. You Google like electronic textures and you get pictures of circuit boards. Emily Wolf is making circuit boards. That's what I'm trying to say. The Slider, which was released by Wolf only as a single, is a marriage of her two albums. And it's got the deep, heavily detuned. I think she tunes down to C. Is that a C note? Um, and there's still it's kind of a pulsing, grinding sort of sound with her sort of vocals framed a little angelically. So when she sings the chorus, and when I'm sad, it creates a layer of beauty that Mike, Mark Bowen maybe wasn't capable of. Anyway, it's a fantastic cover because it's one of the rare ones that develops the original song and pulls more out of it than perhaps you knew was there originally. Anyway, links are below. Check it out. I don't want people to think I was passing judgment on drug use earlier. I'm actually all coked up myself. So let's let bygones be bygones, okay? Carry on. Slider. Slider. Wait, that's also the name of the guy in uh, Top Gun. Oh, Rick Rosevich, you dirty dog. So there's a running joke about the Grammys regarding the Best New Artist category since the criteria for nomination doesn't seem to exist. It might be your first album that's being celebrated or maybe, you know, hey, is this album seven? I think I'm a little surprised actually that for artists who have had long careers and then gone and released a box set or something with unreleased early material that that stuff hasn't then gotten them retroactively nominated as Best New Artist. That's what I think of the Grammys. Actually, I enjoy the Grammys. No, I love watching this show. I didn't like it when I was in my 20s. I thought it was crap. However, Ifanye Ellsworth from Chicago fits people's more conventional notion of what a new artist would be, up to and including someone like me butchering her name. True story. In the early 2000s, when I was working at Illinois Entertainer, still as an intern, so a young pup, I was assisting with um, profiles of local record labels. We did this, I think every April was local uh, record label month in the magazine. And a uh, gentleman, I can't remember his name, was representing, I think it was called Fat City Records, P-H-A-T, um, it was a hip-hop label on the south side. And he came to the office, and we were just shooting the, the breeze, about up-and-coming Chicago rappers. I think at this point in time, Common and was really the only thing happening. He didn't even live in the city anymore. I think Twista had a record deal previously, but nothing ever came of that. He didn't really make it until after Kanye West uh, revitalized him. He kept mentioning Kane West. Kane. He was saying Kane. Okay. I never saw it written down. However, I was under the impression that there was this big rapper in Chicago named Kane West. Where I got in a big argument with my editor, Althea Legaspi, because I was insisting this guy from the South Side, who would know better than a 22 year old kid who just came out of Champaign Urbana, that it was pronounced Kane. Althea, no, it's Kanye. Look how it's spelled. A. A. Ron. I mean, oh well. Anyway, so Ifanye, if I'm messing up your name, all apologies, seriously. Summer Walker's You Don't Know Me is not the most obvious song to cover. There are uh, some lyric videos and fan visualizers on YouTube. But if you go to setlist.fm, um, that website that shows what everyone's been playing in their concerts, I don't think she's ever even performed it live. Though it has 9 million listens on Spotify, uh, you could maybe chalk that up to just people starting the album and listening from beginning to end. Uh, it's only the 13th most listened to track on that record. Um, and it's dwarfed by Walker's biggest hit, which was with Drake. Um, Walker's vocal on the original is weary, but kind of hopeful. Um, it, she's telling the story of a young family who are struggling to get along with each other. Um, maybe they came together 
uh, out of circumstance, um, but they're you know the they're they're getting to know each other. The arrangement is strangely busy for what's essentially just guitar and voice. Uh, who I didn't check to see who did the production on it, but they kind of they had a bad day on this one. What Ellsworth does with the track is she adds a beat, she ditches the first verse entirely, she starts writing with the chorus, which is just, you don't know me, um, and she changes the tone. She kind of latches onto a sense of disappointment. Um, the hopefulness of the original is gone, and the more she repeats the chorus, you don't know me, it sounds more and more like, you don't know what I'm capable of. It's almost like a threat. So whatever reason she latched onto this song, she clearly thought she could improve it, and I would say she definitely did. Um, the video available, and links are below, uh, is of a live performance that was a different version than the one you can find online via streaming. Um, both are fantastic and enjoyable, and you check them out now. Now. If the reasons for Ellsworth to cover Summer Walker aren't quite so clear, I feel a great amount of certainty about Britney Spears and Ethel Kane. Now, Kane, uh, if you don't know her, and I didn't, uh, there's a couple things you should know about her. Her methods are not subtle. If there is any levity in her music, it's well hidden. She's crafted an image of a sort of small town Lolita who has a substance abuse problem and in her spare time crafts these really dense tracks with reverb and echo and loops. Um, they're impressive. They're almost like buildings. They're so dense. Anyway, when you hear that Kane is covering Britney Spears and you know that Ethel Kane is a very serious artist, you think this could break one of two ways. Either she's loading a throwaway pop song with so much dramatic and atmospheric reverb that she's kind of just fabricating depth where there wasn't any there to begin with. Or you think this is her chance to take the piss. I don't know if I ever heard every time when Britney Spears originally released it in 2003. I certainly didn't know it was her first meaningful songwriting contribution. I also didn't know that it was about a certain high-profile breakup. Among the other things I don't know is whether Ethel Kane has ever dated Justin Timberlake. But I do know that he or his breakup with Britney as proxy haunts her. She suffers the song's heartbreak, not like the end of a relationship, but like it's a death. Reverb, echo, vocal vocal loops they blanket her and she doesn't seem to notice the loss envelops her and it's waves until she's finally swept out to sea and she's standing at the bottom of the lake and she doesn't even put her hands up when she sees the light she's just going to stand there she's just so shaken by this whole experience um this is heavy i mean it's it's very deliberate with the slow pacing and the haunting vocals but her cover of every time is a hands down and grossing cover. It's an absolutely gorgeous piece of music. Um, it makes me think I should have been paying a much closer attention to Britney Spears because I did not know the potential for this was there. It's an excellent cover song. I recommend you check it out. Links are below. There is a Tumblr page devoted to the allegedly 200 plus covers of These Boots Were Made for Walking by Nancy Sinatra and Lee Hazelwood. Um, let me look at my list here. The Supremes, I'm not going to recall 200. The Supremes, David Byrne, Megadeth, Billy Ray Cyrus, Jessica Simpson, KMFDM, Jerry Hollowell from the Spice Girls, David Hasselhoff, and even Sarge, a uh, punk slash emo band that was at the University of Illinois, same time I was back in the late 90s. Los Angelino uh, Kate Clover saw a gap in the 200 and has decided to release her own cover of the song. Um, I don't need to explain the song nor the many ways it has been contorted. Clover fancies herself as a sort of vampy um, noir Los Angelino, I like to say that, um, who's inspired by X, you know, a 
and also not just X. This song you can tell she's listened to the X offshoot, The Knitters, which is where John Doe and Eugene Chervenko went um, when they went country. She subs out the bass line so that it's played on a tremolo heavy guitar, um, and she sasses out the lyrics. Uh, did we need another cover? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's it's it's, it's a fun one. It's worth hearing. Links are below. Anyway, thanks. Click like, click subscribe, leave comments. Uh, leave comments about more cover songs. Everybody loves cover songs. Everyone can use more ideas for their mixes. And uh, I would I would love to see what you guys are listening to out there. All right. Take care.